Hi there, and thanks for joining. As work environments have drastically changed with distance and hygiene measures in place, we ask ourselves, how does the huddle room as we know today fit into this new reality? Does it make sense for offices to keep these rooms intended for small groups now down just to one or two occupants? This, ladies and gentlemen, is the huddle puzzle. Thank you for that intro. Julian. Hi, my name is Kudzai and welcome to um, our Shure Expresso session today, um, The Huddle Puzzle. We'll be exploring the next generation of huddle rooms. I'm joined today by a few of my Shure colleagues. Hi, I'm Julian. Hey, I'm Andrew. Hello, my name is Tom. Hi, and I'm Geraint. Thanks, guys. I'll be moderating the webinar today, and if you have any questions along the way, please feel free to um, add them in the question window and we'll get to them at the end of the session. Also, just to let you know, the session is live and we may experience technical issues, but this shouldn't be the case. <laughs> Thanks, good sign. So, if you're a, a facilities manager or IT manager, AV manager, or frankly anyone with responsibilities in adapting your workplace to the new normal that we're existing in right now, this session is intended for you. So please join us for the next 30 minutes where we put together the pieces of the huddle puzzle. Here are the topics we'd like to cover today. Firstly, trends we are observing in conference room deployment for the hybrid working environment, why conference rooms often sound bad and how we can make them sound better. The new standard of microphone technology that no one's talking about, but really they should know about. And lastly, some low touch solutions for your conference rooms. So let's start with some trends. The survey conducted in July shows that 75% of corporate meeting spaces will be modified to include video conferencing. Among huddle rooms alone, it was found that 60% of these would be upgraded for video conferencing. In terms of utilization, the conversations we're having with clients point to more huddle sized spaces being deployed for single use in order to provide workers with high quality facilities for virtual meetings. Tom, you're sat in one of our huddle rooms in London. This would be the perfect example, wouldn't it? Yeah, precisely, Julian. This huddle room is relatively new and would be designed typically to three, maybe four, possibly even five people that literally huddle around this table and all join uh, a video call from this lovely endpoint here. But of course, you can see we've had to remove a bunch of the chairs in this room, leaving definitely a maximum of two, but it's most comfortable for one person in here right now, given the current social and distancing guidelines, at least for here in the UK, but probably for most of the world. Okay, and at the same time, larger meeting rooms are being modified to allow for groups of workers to join video conferences together in the room while socially distanced. So essentially, larger meeting rooms like this one on the screen uh, are becoming the huddle room of 2021, and such as the room Andrew is sat in right now. Yeah, that's right, Julian. So in the same way that Tom explained that this room used to be fine to occupy eight or maybe 10 people, uh, we've had to change the configuration of the furniture to allow for only three. But the beauty of fitting the room out with high quality equipment in the first place is actually we didn't need to change any of the technology because we were miking up the room to give us high quality audio for all participants. So that was uh, really quite actually an easy thing for us to do here. Just remove some chairs and our room is up to current working guidelines while still being able to participate in a high quality video conference. So, Julian, that being said, yeah. what, um, what are the technologies that we have available to overcome some of the traditional challenges of high quality audio in conferencing? Well, I just want to uh, put it into perspective real quick. Um, before we get into that, um, there was a large survey conducted uh, before COVID happened where 96% of respondents were frustrated with their virtual meetings and over 80% blamed the audio quality. And this is where Shaw comes in and because audio is our business, we've been making products in this manner for 96 years. And as the world's leading manufacturer of microphones, we have some very innovative audio products for any size meeting space where every single person in the room can be picked up and transmitted with high intelligibility into a conferencing space. And we don't actually have the need for any microphones on the table at all. That's right. And I've just thrown up a slide with a few examples of the microphones in question. This is our MicroFlex Advanced series. 
They come in different shapes, sizes, colors. Most importantly, these are networked array microphones, a fairly new technology that most people uh, outside of our industry don't really know about yet. That's right, and the mic on the left, Andrew, you have an, act, an MXA 910 in your ceiling, do you not, right above your head? Uh, I do indeed, let me just tilt my camera up slightly and stand up, but you can see in our ceiling just up here, we have a black MXA 910 very neatly blending into our black ceiling. Uh, so from a room user point of view, there's no need to really feel that there's a microphone in the table. You can just move around the space, have a chat with each other. The audio pickup is uniform wherever you go. Uh, and with multiple participants, which we don't have in this space at the moment, you can have free flowing conversation and it'd be very easy and intelligible at the far end to listen to and contribute. Cool. So that one single mic, well, basically all we can see is a green LED because it blends in so well. But the green LED microphone is covering all the seated positions of that table for three people or seven, eight, nine, however many yeah. usually reside in there. So the microphone has the ability to process up to eight individual channels. We have six of them placed around the table, which are being auto mixed together so that as I move around, the correct one positioned in this space is selected and sent to you, giving even pickup. Cool. That's awesome. That's I, I love how it, how it just blends into the ceiling. You don't even see that it's there. So guys, you can even turn the LED off. <laughs> you could do you that could. too. Yeah, if you think it's annoying, why not? You could change the color too. So what is it about so many people being frustrated with their audio in their conference rooms? Can we explain to the people tuning in why that is? Uh, yes, indeed. So. I think we've alluded to this a little already, but when you add more mul multiple microphones to a space, you pick up more room noise uh, because you've just got more electronic capsules picking up essentially acoustic uh, sound waves. And the more sound waves there are bouncing around into multiple microphones, it sounds more reverberant and roomy. So the way to combat that is really have a selection of microphone channels per person and a mixing engine which can choose dynamically the best one for the talker. So as you saw when I walked around the table, I was being picked up by one physical microphone, but in there there's lots of small microphone capsules which form these beams. So it's like having multiple microphones around the table from one physical unit. The other problem that you get is conference rooms have air conditioning, they have uh, PCs in them which have fan noise and some of the processing that we have developed in-house at Shaw allows us to do noise reduction and also during a conference call when you have people talking from the screen they can in some instances hear themselves back as echo so we have our own acoustic echo cancellation technology as well which is able to in real time subtract audio coming from a loudspeaker that's different to me talking so it's really able to dynamically, in real time, adjust where I'm talking from, reduce noise in the room, and reduce any unwanted sound coming from the far end of your video conference. Um, we also, in our product portfolio, have a number of different microphones for different applications, and all of them are suitable for a meeting room, but some are better than others. Um, Tom has now moved over to the room next to us in the boardroom. And he has some of our wireless mics, our table mics, and our ceiling-based microphones installed and selectable. So, Tom, can you give us some examples of how and why certain microphones work well for conferencing and others don't? Yes, absolutely. So I've got a cough. So this is our MX wireless system at an end address microphone. As you can see, there, well, there, there are two types of sound we have. They have the, 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 the kind of direct sound that you want and the indirect sound, like the signal and the noise. We want most signal and we want to get rid of most of the noise. Traditionally, the best way to get this best ratio is to place the microphone literally as close to the sound source as possible. You guys should be hearing me really nice and clearly right now because I'm addressing this microphone absolutely directly. But the problem is, is that well, there's a few problems because I'm being distracted in this room. If I was in a normal meeting, I wouldn't be able to use this microphone traditionally because I'm having to concentrate on how to hold the microphone and how to use it. The other thing is that I need to make sure that I've got the microphone at a consistent distance from my mouth and I'm talking into it directly because if I hold it too far away, the noise level will drop quite rapidly or is, is, well, equally if I hold it to the side, pass it past my mouth again, you can really hear quite some um, 
differences in audio which are really quite distracting the other problem is that i can't do any typing i can't operate anything because I'm, I'm always using one hand to hold this microphone so i'm going to switch from this very high quality but quite labor intensive microphone onto one that doesn't require quite so much um, information i'm actually going to go to this small boundary microphone that i'm going to place on the table right in front of me Right, that's one microphone muted and the other one unmuted. Now, this microphone is better in this instance because it means it's on the table and my hands can be entirely free. So I'm free to type, operate stuff and act quite naturally around the room. However, I still need to maintain, the, go on, I think my laptop's in the way, maintain the correct kind of distance between the microphone and myself to make sure that I have a good standard level of audio. Because if I go to too close to the microphone, it gets really loud. Equally, as I lean back, the volume level changes really quite a huge amount. And what's that? As a question from the back of the room, as I turn to face away from the microphone, you'll see the sound level drop, or I might be facing the front of the room. So you can hear that those differences are, are there somewhat. Going back to the laptop, we tend to use these in meetings quite a lot. And with the laptop in front of the microphone, it's okay. But as soon as I open the lid of the laptop, it's like me putting my hand across my mouth and you can't hear me that closely indeed. I'm going to switch to the third type we've got in this room, this gooseneck microphone instead. So this gooseneck um, is yeah, quite similar to a boundary, we just put the microphone on the top of a stick instead. And it helps to solve the laptop issue because of course it will go over the top of the laptop so I can still um, do my work here whilst making sure you guys hear me nice and clearly too. However, however rather, we're still bound to the fact that I need to maintain a standard distance. If I lean back or talk to someone over here, the volume level will drop off absolutely massively. Same if I go too close and the same with the front of the room towards the back of the room. There's some, excuse me, some pretty huge differences in there. This is not to um, sh uh, say these microphones are bad because they're really not. In many, many applications, these are really, really good. Like if I'm when talking you, to the microphone directly, it's incredibly clear. Directly. Yeah, when you address them correctly, they sound great. Yes, but it involves some kind of user engagement to make certain that I'm talking into this microphone so you guys can hear me and my head shall not really move or migrate very far from here at all. And multiple people would need multiple of those units. That's true. And they'd all, all need to operate them in the same way, or as opposed to the other mics we have in the room, which are set automatically to cover the areas where people might speak. They can automatically pick up the stuff they need to. So the benefit of the, the wall mounted or ceiling mounted array type microphones means that you get the consistency of sound throughout the space without having the user interaction of the physical microphone object. Removing Absolutely. some of those variables and getting you into a much more consistent experience. And uh, I mean, w when you look at those you know, handheld wireless microphones, you talking about gooseneck microphones sitting on the table, you know, in this world we live in today, you know, that's those are additional things that, you know, we you'd have to clean, you know, after every single meeting. So it kind of adds another uh, element of, of workflow and hygiene measures, um, which is not too sought after today. Uh, we're going to go into some of the, the low touch things a bit later in, in the webinar. Um, so thanks for that, guys. That was great. No problem. Uh, I was just going to say, we've, we've got the alcohol wipes at the front of the room, so I'll give the mics a clean after the session. Especially <laughs> after that cough, Tom. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so, I mean, not only do, do these these microphones in the ceiling, on the wall, do they sound great, but there are a number of other benefits that come with them. So, I mentioned before that these, these are networked devices. So, Grange, as our resident IT expert, what is it about the networkability of these mics and why that should matter to someone managing their office facilities or IT? Uh, well, I'd have to say that actually the beauty of these is that they fit into the existing IT infrastructure. Uh, that's mostly because they are powered via one Ethernet cable. Um, so the single cable that goes into the device takes care of both power and data. Oh, I see. So no need to lay additional audio cables, just plug them into the existing network? 
Yep, that's correct. Um, most people in IT be, will be familiar with these cables and the network switches that they would connect to. Okay, um, so we could potentially have an office building with hundreds of meeting rooms, with hundreds of microphones all plugged into the corporate network. Um, what can you tell us about managing this kind of scale of meeting rooms? Well, naturally, uh, because they exist on a network, uh, that means that they can be observed and monitored uh, from anywhere else on the network. Um, so it actually saves the IT guys having to wander around physically checking each room. Um, they can use some uh, software that Shure has developed called SystemOn. And uh, this allows them to observe the rooms and the status of the devices, such as um, whether a unit gets disconnected or has been taken from one room to another. Um, the system on software can also be set up so that a IT manager or um, anybody who's, in, who's responsible for these rooms can be alerted via text message or email um, that will tell them exactly where the problem is so that they don't have to uh, spend hours looking around for it. They can go directly to the room and, uh, and fix the problem. That's pretty cool. I think that makes uh, a lot of people's lives much easier. Um, so what about security? Are there any concerns in that regard? Well, yeah, uh, like anybody in IT, uh, you worry about uh, security and uh, especially when it comes to things like audio. Uh, we want to make sure that uh, these uh, meetings are uh, secure and any conversations are kept confidential, uh, especially in corporate environments. So that's why uh, when we go from microphone uh, all the way along uh, to the loudspeaker, that, that audio, that conversation is encrypted. Right, yeah, that's pretty important. Um, now we often get the question, don't these audio devices take up a bunch of bandwidth on my network? Uh, yeah, it's uh, an age-old conversation in IT about making sure that the network isn't uh, flooded. And uh, it's understandable that uh, the idea of audio, which is pretty uh, un uncompressed and uh, a lot of people worry about it, but actually with these devices, uh, very little bandwidth is taken up. Um, so uh, no, no need to worry too much about the impact of uh, these on your network. Okay, cheers, Grant. Now we know a bit more about the IT side of things. Now we did say we'd cover some low touch elements um, as this is a topic that's on everyone's minds these days. Uh, so Tom, what is it about our solutions that make them low touch? Well, <clears throat> to go back to something that Garen just covered, it's the, mainly the ability to monitor our devices on the network and pinpoint where a technician may need to make some checks or to be able to find out which microphones have been used that day. This reduces movement around the office and also, yeah, generally less contact with others and also just erring onto the microphones that are installed in the ceiling or in the wall, they are low touch by very virtue of you literally can't touch them unless you're really tall. And um, the other element is space typically. I might have a great pickup range of as you heard. They can very much sit in the ceiling or the walls you can see uh, to make sure the voices are crystal clear. In fact, we're using an MXA 710, a four foot array in the front of this room. And you can hear me clearly right now. I'm sure you can hear Andrew clearly as well. Yeah, absolutely. So our four foot microphone MXA 710 is rated at being good to capture intelligible audio out to about five and a half meters from the microphone. Something um, like that. So our room here actually is longer than that and because we are lucky in the fact that the room is acoustically treated very nicely we can extend the range of pickup from that microphone even further. So the backup of the room here is seven and a half maybe even nearly eight meters yeah that's true so you'll even catch me nicely down the side of the room as i as I walk around here the main the main purpose about this really is that you can tune it to set up so to be optimized for the people around the table yeah but when someone quickly join uh, pops into a meeting room to add in a few details or just nips in for five or ten minutes or post covid times that we can have more people in here you, you know that the microphone solution can pick up the room in general rather than being back in this situation where you can only hear uh, one, one person. person so lots of the conversation from this room ends up being missed so you end up bridging more people together in a much more natural way yeah. and um 
on that note, you know, the fact that the microphones, kind of what I alluded to before, is that that they're not on the table means that there's just one less thing that people can touch and that you need to worry about. Yeah. Um, okay. Another thing, you know, when one of the things that really annoys me is that when I'm on a conference, a conference call in a conference room, uh, you know, some have this, this setup where you can actually see the mute status of of the the meeting room, so it, it can be hidden, you know, on the control panel or on the display. Sometimes it kind of sinks down. Um, what's what's our answer to this common issue? Uh, well, all of our MXA microphones have a multicolor LED on them. Uh, I think you can just about in our shot see the ones on the table, uh, but it's common to the rest of the mics. Uh, we have a kind of color convention in this room because we have multiples. Not only do we need to know is our system on mute or live, but also which of these microphones are we using to demonstrate. Um, so as we switch them, we've got a control system which can tell the lights to change color. And the obvious change to make is we can mute the whole system. So very easily, we can see in the room, ah, all the mics in this room are red, therefore we are not transmitting any audio. And then, ah, the mics are not red, that one's green, we must be using that one. But we can also tether that to some of the soft codecs as well, can't we? Yes, if you're using our P300 or any USB matrix device to take audio from a network into a USB, then we have some functionality there using USB sync, where if you're using Teams or Zoom, are the two currently uh, supported platforms, if you mute the Teams client, then the LEDs on the microphones will change in sync with the soft codec. And equally, if you mute the microphones, the, the, the client syncs as well? Yes, indeed. And you will be shown to be mute at, at the far end. And that's, that's a key thing these days, you know, we're, we're bringing your own devices encouraged because, you know, if you're bringing your own device, you're touching really remains within your personal space and you're not touching any any common surfaces. Yes, and particularly true in Teams as well, because in Teams you can very easily be muted by a different participant in the room. Yes. So for a remote participant to mute you because, I don't know, you're working from home and the dog's brought a cat in the house, I don't know. So to suddenly see that your microphones have now been muted yeah. um, is, is really useful. Otherwise, you just end up spieling for five or ten minutes. People are like, you're on mute, we can't hear you. Yeah, we've all been there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, no, no, no. So speaking of these three turns that you've just shown, should yes. I button onto those so we can hear how they sound in this room? Yeah. Three, two, one, and there we go. We are now using the three tens. I know that because they've gone green. Yeah, and the you know the three tens we haven't really spoken about too much today because the focus has been on getting microphones on the wall or on the ceiling. But there are many occasions where that's actually not very practical, uh, and having a microphone that can live in the table with these mute and LED functionalities is certainly beneficial. Um, and in the same way that the wall and the ceiling microphones have multiple microphone elements all mixed together. The same is true for the three turns on the table here and our P300 processor. So That's true. So yeah, we, we generally have consistent sound around this table. So wherever I am at this table, whichever direction I'm facing, there'll be some coverage from this microphone system set up to make sure that the end user experience is way more consistent than me talking into a handheld microphone. Even if I switch seats over to here, for example, you should hear that the, the audio is, is chiefly the same yep. or if Andrew goes to the head of the table. Yep. The, you shouldn't really notice any kind of switching between microphones, but it should be uniform. Yeah, and the, the system can recognise where the sound is coming from in directionality to a particular microphone source and highlight that one over others. Yes, absolutely. And even me facing the wrong way now, that should be picked up by the arrangement of the lobes from the 310 itself. Yes, indeed. And so that we've shown all the microphones in this room, because uh, we heard the MXA 910 in the room you were in to begin with. Yes. Let me switch to that one for us now. Oh, I'll stay where I am. Cool. I'll move. There we go, MXA 910 front. So the light has gone green. We are good to go. Yeah. Uh, the room next door, we were using, I think, seven channels or lobes around the table. Here we're using seven. Uh, one at the head of the table here and three round each edge, which means in the same way that with the 710, somebody can just walk in, sit down, join a meeting and be heard. They don't have to worry about any microphones. It's just taken care of. Yep, it just works. It just, it just works. works. 
Uh, and the same being true that as I move around the room, the system tracks and follows me and sounds consistent. I'm going to stay sitting now. I think my step count's pretty high for today already. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for that, guys. That was excellent. Um, so that sums it up with what we wanted to cover in today's espresso session. Uh, we're at 25 minutes, so we are with, within our promise of being under 30 minutes. Um, so just, just to cover real quick what we spoke about, uh, one was the trends that we're observing in meeting room deployment. Um, why it is that conference rooms often sound bad and array microphone technology that can help overcome that. The networkability of microphones and how this simplifies facility management and allows for the encryption of audio transmitted on the corporate network. And then we finished off with some low touch elements that Sure Systems have to offer. Awesome, thank you very much, guys. Um, I will now go to the Q&A segment, uh, see if we have any questions. So bear with me one second. Okay, so we've got two questions. Uh, first one, how do I get the microphones into my video call? Oh, that's a good point. So, so far we've, we've spoken about them on microphones themselves. Yes. All, all the microphones we've shown today basically terminate in a network connector. So they go onto a data network. Uh, you'll typically need to get some kind of other device on them to actually get them into your either hard or soft codec. So to get them into a hard codec, you would need either one of two devices, a P300 or an Annie USB matrix. So the P300 accepts that Dante audio from the microphones and does some clever automatic mixing and processing and can output it onto a traditional analog connector. And then you could be able to wire that hard into your into your codec. You could alternatively use a, a USB connector if you want to use um, a, a, a PIS soft codec instead. So the, the P300 becomes your speakerphone essentially. That becomes the device you use to get the microphones into the PC. And also you typically use to get the audio back out to the PC is you'd normally use a an analog microphone out sorry, a microphone, oh, I can't even talk, an analog loudspeaker connector off the back of it as well. Yeah, on the topic of loudspeakers, let's not forget that we also have the option now of using our Dante-based networked loudspeakers. So once you've got your microphone and your processing in the networked environment, it makes complete sense to put your loudspeakers within that same networked infrastructure, which you can also monitor and you can um, install with one cable and not needing any external power amps. That's true, that's true. And the, um, just for reference, the Annie USB is like the baby brother of the P300. It does most of the stuff, but not not quite all of the processing in the same way. Yeah, so yeah. with just a very simple choice of which microphone fits my room, which device do I need to use to get it into my PC, and network-based loudspeaker, you've got three components which make up a very high-quality sounding meeting room. Absolutely. But uh, sometimes you've got a, a dedicated in-room asset, in which case we've got a new product called Intellimix Room, which is a piece of software that runs the service on your device. This means you actually are able to accept the uh, the Dante stream straight off the network into the PC and then use the, the built-in software on that device to send your audio to whichever soft client you're using, sorry, soft codec you're using. Yeah. For your chosen meeting. So it's really the Shure's high quality processing engine running inside your Windows 10 environment. Cool, yeah. Cool. Uh, and then the last one is what is the reach of the microphones? Ah, <laughs> an age old question. <laughs> How far can my mic pick up? Well, I kind of showed you with these, these microphones earlier. These are dedicated to traditional close proximity. A handheld microphone, somewhere between for spoken word applications, three to six inches, unless you're Brian Blessed, you might need, need a foot or something. But apart from that, they're usually basically close, close use microphones. Even the gooseneck and the boundary would be considered close microphones. As soon as you go any more than arm's half a length. meter, yeah, or, or a bit more than an arm's length away, the audio level drops on, drops off from them quite massively. But as you can see, the combination of these microphones you've heard today, uh, in, in conjunction with the short process and with automatic gain control, the ability to adjust automatically how much gain or how loud it is basically per channel is really useful to ultimately normalize the, the system. Yeah. But um, yeah, the, the three tens on the table are designed to be close microphones. You wouldn't really want to have them any further away than, well, two arms length really. But the MXA seven tens and nine tens, as you can see, are dedicated to be able to having a much larger coverage distance. Yeah, so as per the spec sheet, the smaller of the two 
MXA 710s is good for talkers out to, uh, was it about five meters? The larger one is a good out to about five, uh, six meters, six and a half meters. Uh, and the ceiling array is good for rooms about, uh, what's the radius? Nine meter radius, uh, amounted height of three meters? Something like that. No, yeah. nine meter diameter. Yes. That's four right. and a half meter radius. <laughs> Cool. Also, cool. there's your microphone reach. We actually have a couple more questions that came in. I already saw those because I'll, I'll read the next one. Can okay, I cool. split my Can I split my audio from my network because of network security? Uh, well, the, because of the fact that the devices appear on your network as any other network device, um, you could simply assign them an IP address, which is part of a VLAN, which you would uh, dedicate to your audio network and um, apply your security settings to that VLAN accordingly. Or you could even have a, uh, a complete air gap between your data network and your audio network. Uh, effectively, they're both data, so um, it, you, you manage it like you would any other data based on your uh, security needs. But that was a good question. Um, here's the next one. You ready, guys? If I'm not mistaken, we need to send far-end audio back to the MXA 910 when using the mixed output as the processing is happening in the MXA 910. Is this possible with the ANI USB matrix? Uh, yes. So the ANI USB matrix acts as the bridge between the USB environment and the rest of the system. So the signal path will go from the microphone to the ANI USB matrix into your soft codec and therefore acts as your microphone transmit. And then the return is from the soft codec over USB into the ANI USB matrix, back onto the Dante network and up to the microphone. And then because there are an analog connector on the ANI USB matrix as well, you have the option of using a network-based loudspeaker or a traditional power amp and loudspeakers too. I hope that cleared that question up. Awesome, awesome. Long way of saying um, yes. <laughs> cool. All right. I guess that's it from us then. Uh, we hope you found this webinar useful. And once again, thank you for tuning in. And from us here at Shaw, we wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thank you very much. Take care. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.